Autobots, transform and roll out! Hello, and welcome to another episode of Brightcast Transformers Talk. So there's some news about Transformers figures that I want to talk about, as I've not done one of these in a good while. We have some Studio Series stuff and some Earthrise stuff to talk about. A lot of this falls into the rumor category, but with New York Toy Fair happening soon, I hope we will be getting confirmation and official images about these soon. So let's talk about Studio Series first, since I have less to talk about related to it. We're finally going to be getting a Voyager class Blitzwing, the one from the Bumblebee movie. I know that this is one that people have been asking for and now they're finally giving it to us. I'm fairly positive that it will not be a triple changer since that's not how Blitzwing was in the Bumblebee movie. Personally, the Bumblebee movie figures in the Studio Series line are hit and miss. The only ones I've actually enjoyed are the number 46 dropkick. Uh, the one in hi of him in his car mode, because that's the one Hasbro didn't mess up, unlike Bumblebee, Shatter in her car mode, and the helicopter mode for Dropkick. Next we have a Voyager class Skipjack. I have never heard of this character, but when I listen to the folks on the Transformers Slag podcast talk about Skipjack, they said this was basically a placeholder name for Constructicon Rampage from Revenge of the Fallen. I guess in Japan they made a toy of Skipjack that was basically a yellow repaint of Rampage. Next one we have is a Voyager class Scrapper. This is the next of the Revenge of the Fallen Constructicons. I don't have much to say about this one since most people knew it was coming. But that puts us at seven Constructicons, including Scrapper, with the one left being Overload. And then we will get to see the Studio Series Devastator in its full form. Lastly, we have Voyager Class Sentinel Prime. I thought this one was brought up before and supposed to be a leader class, but after sifting through previous episodes of Transformers Talk, this is the first time I brought up uh, a Sentinel Prime figure in the Studio Series line. The Sentinel Prime is obviously from Dark of the Moon, and obviously he's not seen a good figure since the Dark of the Moon line, so... I think they will do him enough justice, I and mean, I hope so, because Sentinel Prime was one of those ones when the Dark of the Moon line came out that I always wanted but never got. So if it looks good, maybe I'll get one. Now we can transform and talk about some Earthrise news. Before I again begin, please note that I don't talk about Battle Masters or Micro Masters as they're not something that interests me. The first one we have is a Deluxe Class Fast Track. I had to look this one up, and apparently Fast Track is a guard for Scorpionok. My bet is that he will be one of those weaponizers like Brunt, which is not something I, I really care for. But this does get us closer to confirming that we're probably going to be getting a Titan-class Scorpionok soon. Next, we have a Deluxe-class Trailbreaker. This is one that most people saw coming as a remold of the Deluxe-class Hoist. I'm fine with Trailbreaker, as he is a character that very rarely sees the light of day in a mainline wave. Then we have Deluxe Class Sunstreaker. This one I'm less excited about, as this is going to be a remold of Wheeljack. I think it's funny because in Combiner Wars, we got Sunstreaker first, then he was repainted into Wheeljack. Anyway, it's not like Sunstreaker looks bad. I just wish he would get his own mold. Next we have is a Deluxe Class Runamuck. This is the one that was fan voted upon and I don't really understand why this character in particular. Maybe because it's lesser known character and is in need of an updated figure, but if this won the fan vote then I imagine that it's a decently popular character. Some people are guessing that rather than making a new mold they'll just remold Cliff Jumper into Runamuck. If you ask me, that would just be sad that a fan-voted character doesn't get a new mold. Then we have Voyager Class Quintesson. If I'm being honest, I don't really care about this one. I've never really liked the Quintessons that much. Yeah, they're in the 1986 movie and the following third season of Generation 1 if you're in the States. But I never found them that great of characters as third, the third season of Generation 1 is the season I like the least. So. 
I just don't care for them. Then we have a Voyager class Snapdragon. This one is like Ape Face, where he has a more animal looking alt mode. I watched a video in which the person stated that unless they plan a new mold, they'll just end up doing a heavy remold of the current Ape Face figure. I honestly don't care what route they go because these are not characters I care about. I've never watched any of the Japanese Generation 1 stuff, but I'm glad that for those that do, are getting official mainline figures of them. Then we come to a leader class double dealer. This guy is not an Autobot or a Decepticon, but he's a hired gun. I feel like this is another one of those lesser known characters that was in need of some kind of new figure because the last time we got him was in the the uh, Thrilling 30 line as a repaint of Blitzwing. However, given what Siege did to the leader class name, I have a feeling this will continue the idea of a Voyager class with a lot of extra stuff. The last one we have is a Voyager class E Megatron. That's what the listing for this figure calls it, E Megatron. I assume meaning Earth Megatron. This is the most interesting one because I am curious what they'll do for his alt mode. The Transformers Slag podcast will question whether they might do something similar to the gun mode or just go with an Earth-based tank mode. I'm sure they will not give Megatron a gun mode in the main line um, since they have only done that in Masterpiece and that they'll only they'll, they'll give him some kind of Earth-based tank mode, but I'm very interested to see what they do and how different it will be before or how different it'll be from the Siege one. Before I wrap up, I want to take a minute and talk about Earthrise, one figure specifically. Upon first seeing it, I was not that thrilled about the Earthrise Optimus Prime, despite everyone calling it the closest mainline. Optimus Prime we will get to Masterpiece. I was not planning on getting this Prime because it's just a slight remold of the current Voyager Siege Prime that also happens to come with a trailer. Plus they call it Leader Class when it's really just Voyager Class Prime with the trailer and that was another reason I was not going to get it. I felt like the price was not there just because it comes with a trailer. However, at this point, I think I am going to. I don't know if I will display Prime with his trailer, as I don't know that I'll have the space for it. I just hope that this new Prime is worth $50, is worth the $50 that its leader class price will carry. During Siege, the only leaders I bought were Ultra Magnus and Galaxy Optimus Prime, both of whom I think were deserving of how Siege does leader class figures. Something that figures like Shockwave were not very deserving of. That's all I have to say, so if you're out of the conversation, leave a comment below. As always, thanks for listening and goodbye.